Today's integral is just magnificent. The structure is extravagant, the solution development is incredibly satisfying, and the result is just beautiful. For starters, we're going to call the integral i for reference purposes, and notice that for the integrand, we have both gamma functions being squared, so we can write this as the integral from 0 to infinity of gamma 1 minus i x squared times gamma 1 plus i x squared all squared dx. And this gamma function here, the structure of the argument of this gamma function, that is, provides an opportunity to apply the recursion formula. So accordingly, we're going to have ix squared times gamma ix squared. Okay, cool. That means we can write the integral i as the integral from 0 to infinity of ix squared times gamma ix squared times gamma 1 minus ix squared all squared dx. And if I expand the square for this ix squared term, then I get i squared times x to the fourth power, and i squared is just negative 1. So popping that negative sign outside the integral, I have the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the fourth power times gamma i x squared times gamma 1 minus i x squared all squared dx. And the structure I have now is perfect for applying Euler's wonderful reflection formula. We know that gamma z times gamma 1 minus z equals pi times the cosecant of pi times z. Link in the description for a proof. And in our case, we have z being equal to ix squared. So this implies that i equals negative integral from 0 to infinity x to the fourth power times pi squared times the squared cosecant of i times pi x squared integration with respect to x. Okay, this looks, again, pretty cool. And we have a negative pi squared now times the integral from 0 to infinity x to the fourth power. The cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine function. So we have the squared sine of i pi x squared dx, and we know what the sine of i times some complex number z is, right? We know that this equals i times the cinch of that z. So this implies that i equals negative pi squared times the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the fourth power dx divided by i squared times the squared cinch of pi x squared. And this is pretty cool because i squared is just negative 1, so it cancels out the negative sign outside, and we're left with this really awesome-looking integral. And we can now adopt an integration by parts approach, but for that, I'm going to have to expand this cinch function. Now, what exactly would the cinch of pi x squared be? Well, we define the cinch of z as e to the z minus e to the negative z, so we have e to the pi x squared minus e to the negative pi x squared, and of course there is a division by 2 in the definition as well. So this implies that i equals 4 pi squared times the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the fourth power dx divided by e to the pi x squared minus e to the negative pi x squared squared. Now for the integration by parts, I'm going to have to make some adjustments to the integrand. So let me just write it over here to give myself some more writing space. Now wait, I'll just rewrite rewrite it down here. So we have 4 pi squared times the integral from 0 to infinity. I want to factor out an e to the negative pi x squared term from here. So that'll give me x to the fourth power dx divided by e to the negative pi x squared and because of the square, you have a square on it as well, and you're left with e to the 2 pi x squared minus 1 squared. And of course, you can expand this as e to the negative 2 pi x squared, and we can just expand that using the multiplicative inverse of that. So we have 4 pi squared times the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the fourth power times e to the pi 2 pi x squared, that is because of the square here, divided by e to the 2 pi x squared minus 1 squared. 
So now we can invoke integration by parts finally because we have the derivative of this term inside the square. The derivative will sort out to 4 pi x times e to the 2 pi x squared, correct? So I can borrow a 4 pi from here. That'll be, that'll be nice. And I'm left with just pi outside, 4 pi here. And I still need a factor of x. So why not just borrow an x from the x to the fourth power? We're left with x cubed, and we're integrating with respect to x. All righty then. So I have the required structure for integration by parts. And finally invoking it, finally, finally invoking it, we have pi times x cubed divided by e to the 2 pi x squared minus 1. And because of the power rule for integration, we're going to have a negative 1. So yeah, negative sign here. Uh, negative sign and the other negative cancels it out quite nicely. Integral from 0 to infinity. Oh, can't forget this factor of pi. And we're dividing by e to the 2 pi x squared minus 1. And we have to differentiate the x cubed. So that gives us 3 x squared dx. And the limits here are 0 and infinity. Okay, now the evaluation of limits here is pretty straightforward. In the limit as x approaches infinity, we get a zero because the exponential function will outgrow the polynomial. We all, we all know that exponentials always beat polynomials when it comes to races to infinity. And in the limit as x approaches zero, the polynomial goes to zero. So finally, we conclude that this term here is just a big fat zero. And this implies that i equals 3 pi times the integral from 0 to infinity of x squared divided by e to the 2 pi x squared minus 1 integration with respect to x. So yeah, the integrals just keep getting cooler and cooler. And the next tool we're about to use is pretty awesome as well. But first, we need a substitution going from the x world to the u world by letting 2 pi x squared equal u, which implies that x equals u to the 1 half divided by root 2 pi. And this further implies, I'm terribly sorry about that, dx equals u to the negative 1 half divided by 2 times root 2 pi du. And the limits of integration are clearly not bothered by our transformation. So we're still going to have an integral from 0 to infinity. So this implies that i equals 3 pi times the integral from 0 to infinity of x squared. Now x squared turns into u divided by 2 pi. The differential element dx transforms into u to the negative 1 half divided by 2 times root 2 pi du divided by e to the u minus 1. The factors of pi cancel out quite nicely, and this implies that i equals 3 divided by 2 times 2, 4 times root 2 pi times the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the 1 half divided by e to the u minus 1 du. And I solved the general case for this integral structure, link in the description, for a proof that the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the s du divided by e to the u minus 1 equals gamma s plus 1 times zeta s plus 1, a beautiful result indeed. So in our case, the integral i sorts out to 3 divided by 4 times root 2 pi times the gamma function at 3 by 2 times the Riemann zeta function at 3 by 2. Of course, we can simplify this further because we know that gamma 3 by 2 equals 1 half of gamma 1 by 2, and gamma 1 by 2 is just root pi. So i equals 3 divided by 4 times root 2 times root pi times 1 half times root pi times the zeta function evaluated at 3 by 2, and the root pi's cancel out, and we're left with i being equal to 3 divided by 8 times root 2 times the Riemann zeta function at 3 by 2. Quite a beautiful result indeed. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.